What's up everyone, it's been a while. So let's talk air gun accuracy for cold weather. That's, it's kind of like a cycle and, and hear me out here. You know, in the spring, everything's great. Summer, you're accurate. And then by the time winter comes around, you're just not as accurate as you were in the summer. And there's quite a few reasons why that is the case. And some might actually be uh, purchasing new gear, but the other part might actually be uh, concentrating on some other areas and setting some expectations. So I'll tell you a couple stories I've had over the period of the years of hunting in cold weather and some of the issues I've had with guns. First off, probably 10 or 12 years ago, I had an Air Force Condor and a Talon P. And long story short, what I noticed from those rifles is the fact that um, in, let's say, minus zero degrees, minus five degrees temperature, they, the, I think the valve would lock up or there was some grease. Now, this is not uncommon amongst a lot of um, devices. Now, there's some actual rifles. In the past, I've talked to some gunsmiths where the, the pin actually starts to freeze up because some of the silicon grease or the grease they use starts to firm up and it doesn't detonate um, the center fire. And that is kind of some of the cases with some of these air rifles. The fact that you have them indoors, you might even go to indoor range and practice and zone them in and, and zero them in and all that. And then you get out and after a few hours in you know, sub, sub degree temps, your accuracy goes to, goes to pot. And that's one of the things you need to kind of test is it might be better just for you to put your gun in, in the car, in the cold, just wait it out. And that way you get out right away, take a few shots, chrono it and see what's going on. There's also all kinds of other things, you know, in those negative temperatures. If you're from Florida and you feel your gun, what happens if you take that air and all the moisture and everything, even though there's not supposed to be moisture in your gun, what happens when you're hitting like minus degree temps are things freezing up? Are things doing? That's one of the downsides. That's one of the things that I've upgraded my guns over the past because just some of the cheaper, I should say more affordable guns have not fared out all that great in the winter. And then now we're talking Springers, um, you know, the, obviously the, the Springers and those, those more affordable rifles. I just haven't had a lot of luck in cold weather with those guns. So that's the first thing, you know, the gear, if you can test out your gear and you seem to be, be holding on point, let's, let's go on to the next one. And that is how much practice you're getting. So there is the cycle where over a few years ago, I was logging my shots and I was absolutely almost perfect. 16 and one going into November, right after Thanksgiving, that's when everything kind of fell apart. The wheels came off the machine. And the first shot I had three misses and a hit and two misses and a hit. And, I, you know, on the ride home, just thinking like, wow, man, my accuracy was like 25% or 30%. And thinking about this, this is the same exact thing that happens in archery. So years ago, a lot of us guys would do the spring archery and, and the summer leagues and that. And we would, your, your archery skills go up. And then as soon as, you know, as soon as hunting season comes in August, you pretty much don't shoot the camps anymore. You don't shoot the weekly leagues. You're hunting. You're spending all that time hunting. And here's the problem. You're not shooting. And so the issue becomes this is the fact that there's a lot of conditions you just miss because you don't have the trigger time. And that was the case with me, even though I solved the problem with the rifle, you know, being in cold weather, the thing is, is there's a definite curve to accuracy over a period of the hunting season going from august which is probably your highest accuracy all the way to january 31st here in the states i'll bet it's a downward trend that's just a natural progression whatever you can do to kind of you know take that into consideration is getting more trigger time now for us you know you wake up in the dark you go to work you come home in the dark and that type of situation so there's not a lot of time to get out and, and shoot the bow or shoot your rifle just make that a consideration. You might want to take a day or two to kind of just do a little bit more trigger time and, and that because it is pretty much prevalent with anybody shooting in any shooting sport. They look at it, the worst, their worst accuracy ratios is kind of January-ish time frame because they just don't shoot enough. So now we got that. We got the gun. You're shooting all on speak. Let's, let's look at the weather. This is the thing. Here in the Midwest, guys, 
our weather is pretty crazy when it comes to November. It is like a switch, and this is the indication where the wheels came off. And the story I was talking about is that November, all the way up to that point, the weather was nice, but then things happen. Like the leaves come off the tree, there's no wind indicators at all. And in the Midwest, we go from eight miles an hour in the summer to about 15 miles an hour average in the winter. What makes things worse is all the vegetation is pretty much gone. So all the harvesting, there's nothing in the fields, there's no grass, the trees might be frozen with ice. So there's no wind indicator to be able to see how fast the wind is moving and that's deceptive. So in my case, I literally seen in, in the, the three shots that I miss, the pellet just doing a, a left, a huge left, um, left hook. And it's one of those things you're like, whoa, what is going on? Because you don't feel any wind on you. But when you start shooting into ravines and canyons and you start shooting up out of the wind breaks, you're in for a completely different story. And so that's the thing. The, the temperatures and the conditions, the air is thicker. It actually plays more havoc on your gun, which we talked about. But it also kind of changes the conditions you're not used to shooting in during the summer. It's just a completely different ball game. And then that kind of comes down to the fourth thing, guys, is your clothes. Now, there's harmonics in a gun, right? Like they talk about the barrel harmonics and there's all that witchcraft stuff. But there's definitely something to be said for your gear. Now, if you're hiking up hills and you got an extra 20 pounds of gear on you, meaning your clothes, your hat, your, your breath is going up, your heart rate is going up, and that affects the shot more than you would think. In cold weather, it just seems sometimes to be a little bit more strenuous when you have a bunch of heavy boots or you're tracking through snow. In addition to that, your shooting positions aren't like they are when you're shooting on a bench or when you got a flat mat out there. You're usually shooting from compromised positions. In addition to those compromised positions, guys, you're shooting with gloves, a hat, maybe a face mask, a, a actual big coat, all that, you could say all that changes the harmonics if you want to believe that. I think it just changes the feel of the gun. If you're using a Springer, which again in cold weather is going to change things, if you're using a Springer or a hold sensitive gun, and to me, even if I'm shooting this rifle and I have a big coat on and gloves and the trigger in your hands start to get numb, this has a very light trigger, you can't really get a good feeling of the gun. It just doesn't feel the same. It feels a little bit off and a little bit kind of cold sensitive. It just feels a little numb overall. These are the things that affect your accuracy as well. So yeah, you take all that into consideration. A gun that probably doesn't shoot as accurate as it does in the summer. You're not getting as much trigger time in. The weather conditions change like double that. You don't really have any weather indicators. And the fact that you have on a bunch of gear that makes you a little less sensitive to the rifle and the hold sensitivity and how you're doing things, in addition to your positions of where you're sitting and how you're holding the gun in a real life hunting condition, lower your expectations. So by the end of the season, I'm trying to keep in my head this year, is I might shoot something at 60 yards in a position in the beginning of the season it might only be 30 yards by the end of the season. By, by the time I got on all my gear, by the time the wind's kicking up in January and I'm in different positions, my accuracy, my expectations are gonna be cutting way back. And that, I guess that allows you to, to really kind of move into the stock mode of knowing the limitation of your round, knowing the limitation of your gun, you can up your accuracy and, and not fall prey to like, oh yeah, things are exactly the same as they were in the summer six months ago and then you'll fail miserably. So I hope this answers some questions and clears some things up, guys. Maybe you don't need a new gun, maybe you do. Um, but yeah, kind of try to work through it. Practice makes perfect in the same conditions with the same gear. If you can you keep everything the same, you're much better off. But that's it, guys. Like this stuff, comments, questions below, and I will see you later.